So here today we're going to be talking about the JX um, brushless uh, 46kg, this is a 12 volt version. So this is kind of like a long term review I guess um, of my experience with this servo. So first up, this servo, um, the specs, I'll just pop them right on the screen right now. Um, it's good, it's really good, it's a strong servo and it's quick and uh, most importantly um, the 12 volt um, compatibility of this servo makes it great and what's better is its price um, so it's around uh, around 60 to 50 dollars depending on where you buy it and for what the specs that they list and the capabilities with servo it's an absolute deal however obviously uh, at that price there are definitely some caveats so first of all I'm just going to show um, the gear sets here so I've already gone through um, actually two sets of gears for this particular servo. I have the servo run in a TRX4 and it is um, on a uh, kind of like an ultra fork out style uh, truck so it's um, it's pretty brutal on the servo itself and you know I'm not entirely surprised that it failed but also it fails pretty spectacularly. So this is a new gear set I've put in. Um, it's out of the spare but um, the servo is currently uh, basically completely broken, it's unrepairable even with new gears. So first of all, um, the first break with this particular servo is actually this top gear. Um, as you can see it's really thin, right? The gears are really shallow, so like the amount of gear teeth uh, which engages, that's really thin. Um, and that causes something like this to happen. So this, this gear right here is this top gear here, which is like second in line, uh, from the spline and that obviously takes quite a bit of torque and although the teeth um, like the pitch of the teeth are good the width of the teeth is just not adequate for the amount of torque or the forces in a crawler so yeah that's the first failure I encountered um, that's uh, a good few teeth gone and a few teeth bent it's not great uh, but you know Server gears break all the time, hence why they have replacements. So, second gear set, much worse. Um, I'll put my photos up right now when I cracked it open and the state of it. Um, as you can see, so this is actually the second gear, uh, the gear that connects right to the motor. Um, as you can see, this pattern is not what's machined into the gear. That's from the wear um, that the gear experienced. Um, and uh, as you can see here, this gear, the teeth are completely gone. So this is the gear that goes on top of the uh, motor right here. So this gear, the teeth are completely gone. The top gear, so this um, kind of secondary gear, I guess, on this kind of bell-shaped uh, gear is also completely sheared off. It's just come off. Uh, it's supposed to be like that, but it's just completely come off. And this, which engages to this top gear, is fine actually, um, surprisingly. It's got a bunch of metal shavings from the broken teeth, but it's fine. So is the top spline um, and uh, the, um, I guess the, um, I don't know, the variable resistor. Basically the thing that um, tells the servo where um, the kind of spline is, like position. Um, so this gear is also fine, the bearings are fine, but when we get into the servo itself, and I'll explain why, now that um, this particular servo, which looks completely fine, why it doesn't work. On this part, um, that is a result of the gears just moving around. One of the telling signs of your servo's kind of toast is the amount of play. If you have a, a good quality servo and it's brand new, there shouldn't be any play in the spines, but there's quite a bit here. And that is because it wears away, the pin is allowed to wobble in its holder. So let's just take this um, particular servo apart. So now that I have the whole servo torn apart essentially, um, you can see there's two pins obviously, that's where the gear goes. As you can see here, there's a huge amount of wobble and play in this, um, where this pin sits into the aluminium case. And it's the same story if I put it into this part where it already actually has a bushing in it and there's even more play. When your gears are inside, this gear that sits right up against the um, actual servo gear 
that this because of the uh, the pin is allowed to move side to side, this gear shifts around like this, and um, or that your mesh is kind of just kind of all over the place, which results in something catastrophic like this. It just kind of disengages slightly, and then when uh, the tr servo tries to correct it, um, it just goes up and just shreds all the teeth. So yeah, this is the major flaw of this particular servo. Other than just like these um, teeth, which are not wide enough, um, the bushings and the case is just not strong enough to hold the, this particular pin in it. Um, so yeah, this is the flaw of the servo. Um, there are a few things they can do uh, actually to remedy this problem. First of all, put bearings in it, which I'll show in a sec from a, uh, a servo from Bluebird, or they can use thicker pins so that there's like uh, the forces on the pin is spread over a wider surface area, so it wouldn't um, kind of wear that hole out as quickly. This server out of the way. Let's move on to I guess what this server is missing and like why it's so cheap and why maybe you shouldn't get this if you're on like if you ha you can spend the money and why the servo comes at the price that it is. There are a few obviously things that it lacks. Here's a, I guess, a more extra extreme example for durability. As you can mm -hmm. see, these um, gears are much wider compared to the JX. Here we have them on a side-by-side -side view. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver as a pointer. Um, so as you can see here, this particular gear, so this is the gear that's second in line to um, the spline gear. This gear is significantly wider than this particular gear. This basically means that it has more surface area to grip on, there's less force on each tooth itself, making this stronger. Also, the second mesh bet uh, between the spline and this second gear is a helical um, design. So this basically again increases um, the surface area because obviously um, if you had if the gear teeth are like this, it'd be shorter than if it's diagonally um, oriented. Then secondly, when we look into the servo case itself, you can see the Bluebird actually has bearings instead of just a bushing and then nothing on the other side. With bearings in place, this essentially makes, basically eliminates any sort of wear on the case itself and um, also just makes it more serviceable. Other than having bearings on the kind of top case itself, it also has bearings where um, the pins uh, connect to the actual um, main case of the servo. That basically just means that this problem would essentially be a non-problem for this servo unless these uh, bearings wear out. It's quite obvious that this pin right here is way thicker than this particular pin and this is just a great durability upgrade. This servo by the way costs around um, 70 to 80 dollars um, and this is a 50 kg, so it's pretty comparable. The only, um, I guess, difference is this runs off of uh, 8.4 volts instead of 12 volts, which, you know, is a bit of just a downgrade. I wish more manufacturers actually made 12 volt servos because I think they're great. So one side note uh, with this servo uh, as well is that obviously can run off 12 volts, but the listing on the website says up to 14 volts. And I've seen some of the questions they ask, they can run it off uh, directly from a 4S and the manufacturer, like the seller says um, no, because you know, the, the specification says 14 volts maximum. That is actually in fact untrue. Uh, I ran this off um, a 4S LiPo, directly off a 4S LiPo, um, and it runs great. Um, well, until this happens. I guess, yeah, if you're running this in, let's say, more of a basher oriented, truck with a servo saver. I can definitely recommend the servo because um, it's inexpensive and it's unlikely you're gonna run into these sorts of durability um, problems uh, if you have a servo saver. I'm not sure what sort of applications this can be. Maybe you're running an eight skill buggy on 4S and you can just use this, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but this servo, definitely not for crawling. Um, so yeah, this is basically, I guess, the flaws of the um, JX46KG, um, basically the whole lineup of the 12 volts and the um, 7.4 volts, like, just remember this 
look this case because they actually make quite a bit of different different servos with the same case design and that's the um the number up there uh, just like be aware of the potential problems you'll run into if you really beat on this servo um so yeah that's it um i'll be swapping over this servo as you can see and i already have a castle bec right here ready to go into um into um, the trx4 to run this at 8.4 volts and we'll well we'll again see how this particular server runs um, and we'll run it until something happens and we'll uh, record it and discuss about it so thanks for watching um, see you next time